Hi, my name is Tete Kepsi Richie, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, our discussion on partial differential equations will be solving constant coefficient partial differential equation using the geometric method. Before the lesson will end, I will take you through what constant coefficient partial differential equations are and the forms they take. Then we'll look at the general solution to such partial differential equations using the geometric method. Then we'll take some sample equations given certain boundary conditions and initial conditions will find solutions to a constant coefficient partial differential equations. This will be a very interesting engagement, so please take a seat. So, when we talk of constant coefficient partial differential equations, they are partial differential equations with the coefficient of all, all underlined, all the partial derivatives being constant. So the coefficient of all the partial derivatives are constant. In one of my videos, we learn how to classify partial differential equations for having a constant or a variable coefficient. Please, if you have not watched that my video, check it out on YouTube. So they take this form. That's a partial differentiation of u with respect to s plus b partial differentiation of u with respect to y equal to zero. So we can say that the constant and the partial differentiations are are orthogonal in the sense that their dot product will be equal to zero. Or this, they can be this as well. They can be this. Now the next thing is, if we find partial differential equations in this form, how do we solve them using the geometric method? What will be the general solution to them? And how do we find a particular solution to such partial differential equations using the geometric method? So, the general solution to constant coefficient first order partial differential equations of this form is giving us this. That's u, a function dependent on x and y equal to b of x minus a of y, where b is a coefficient of the partial differentiation of u with respect to y, and the a is a coefficient of partial differentiation of u with respect to the x. So this is not uh, anything difficult. Anytime they give you the general solution to this using geometric method will be this. However, I must stress that you can solve this using language though. However, if the question limits you to use geometric method, you can use language. That's why there is the need to do to know this one too. So now we take a sample question, then we see how we can find the general solution to a first order constant coefficient partial differential equation using the geometric method. So, let's look at our first question. He said, find the general solution to the partial differential equation 5, uh, the partial differentiation of u with respect to s plus 6, the partial differentiation of u with respect to y equal to 0, using the geometric method. So, you can use a language, even though you can use it, but the question limits us. So, we said the general solution is giving us u of x, y, equal to f of bx minus ay. So, what is our b? Our b in this case is 6. And our a in this case is 5. I hope you get that. So, u of xy will be equal to a function. What's our b? So, it says 6x. Then our a is 5. 5y. This becomes the general solution to this first order constant coefficient partial differential equation using the geometric method. So with this, if some boundary or initial conditions are given to us, we just substitute to get one particular solution. We'll solve another one where boundary or initial conditions are given so that you'll be abreast with that. So let's look at the second equation. Is that find a particular solution to the partial differential equation three the partial differentiation of u with respect to s plus 2, the partial differentiation of u with respect to t equal to 0, given that u uh, of x 0 is equal to sin x. So this is an initial condition. Since the condition is subjected to time, we learned that already. Please, if you do not watch my videos on auxiliary conditions to partial differential equations, please check it out on YouTube. So this is a what? An initial condition. So we said that 
the solution to this using please using geometric method though using geometric so that you'll be limited so using a geometric method so we say that the general solution u of x t will be equal to a function of b of s minus a of t place this place is t that's why i brought t now what is that s of t our b here is 2 and our a is 3 so we say a function of uh, 2x minus 3t so now they have given so this is the general solution using geometry they have given us some initial condition we substitute then we find a particular solution to that partial differential equation so since the initial condition is given substitute that means any place we see t we put zero in our general solution so our f of 2x minus 3 so in place of t we put zero okay and to be equal to sin x so our f of the whole of this will be zero. So f of 2x is equal to sin s. So since we don't have a single va a variable here equal to sin s, we'll let one single variable be equal to that. So we say let a to be equal to 2x. So in place of 2x, we put a. Now we make s a subject. Our s will be equal to a over 2. Okay, so now we substitute uh, any place we see s, we put a over 2. Any place we see 2s, we put a. So our function of a, f of a, will be equal to sine, in place of that, will be a over 2. Now, since we know f of a to be sine a over 2, we can find f of 2x, f of 2s minus 3t. This will be equal to sine. That means in place of a, we put 2s minus 3t. So sine 2s minus 3t over 2. This there becomes a particular solution to this, our constant coefficient, first order partial differential equation using the geometric method. You can test, you can test whether this is actually a particular solution. So now let's test to see if this is actually a particular solution to the PDE. So we want to verify if this is actually a solution to this uh, constant coefficient first order partial differential equation. Please, if you have not watched my videos on how to verify whether uh, a, a, partial, a, a solution, a particular solution is actually a solution to a partial differential equation, please whether a function is, is actually a particular solution to a partial differential equation. Please check out my videos on YouTube. Now let's do that. So what do we do? We'll find partial differentiation of this function with respect to x and find the same partial differentiation of the same function with respect to t. When we substitute in the left hand, the, uh, the right hand side or the left hand side is equal to the right hand side, then we say it's a solution. If it is not, then it is not a solution. So I can rewrite the function as u of x, y is equal to sine, I will let 2 divide any of these, so I will get x minus 3 over 2t, I hope you get that. Now let me find partial differentiation of u with respect to x, so my t will be kept constant. Remember how to differentiate these trigonometric functions, we will differentiate this and use it to multiply the differential of this. So I differentiate x is 1, I differentiate sine is cos. So when we use the one to multiply the cos, we still have cos. Then we repeat the function. So this will be the partial differentiation of u with respect to s. Now we find the partial differentiation of u with respect to t. So u of t will be equal to. Now we differentiate this and use it to multiply. When we differentiate this, we get negative 3 over 2. So negative 3 over 2, then cos x minus 3 over 2 t. Now we want to substitute this and this into this and the left hand side is equal to the right hand side. Then it's actually a solution. So let's substitute and see. So 3 bracket. What's our u of 
our partial differentiation of u with respect to s. This is it. So cos bracket s minus 3 over 2t. So then plus 2. Then partial differentiation of u with respect to t is this. So negative 3 out of 2. Cos x minus 3 over 2t. And it must be equal to 0. When it is equal to 0, then it is actually a solution. So let's solve it. This will be 3 cos x minus 3 over 2t. Then these two divide these two will be left with minus 3 cos x minus 3 over 2t and must be equal to 0. Now the, look at this. It's the same as this. So we subtract is 0. 0 is equal to 0. So you can see that our left hand side is equal to the right hand side. So it is actually a solution. So this is actually a particular solution to this our uh, first order constant coefficient partial differential equation using the geometric method. We'll solve another example so that you'll be abreast with it. So let's solve our third question. Before we solve our third question, please remember to subscribe to the YouTube channel and click on the notification bell so that if I post a video, you'll be the first to receive it. Also, the verification to check whether that uh, function is a solution to the partial differential equation is not part of the solution to it. It's just a side for you to verify or for you to be sure what you have done is correct. Now let's see this. Let's say find a particular solution to the partial differential equation for the differential of u, uh, the partial differentiation of u with respect to x minus 3, the partial differentiation of u with respect to y equal to 0, given that u of 0, y is equal to y okay, using the geometric method. Please, the geometric method. So you can use Langrage. Now, this is a boundary condition given. So we said the general solution to this partial differential equation that's u of x, y will be equal to a function of b of x minus a of y. This is very simple. So our u of x, y just identify the b. The b is negative 3. Remember that. So we have f of negative 3 x a is 4. So minus 4 y. Then this becomes the general solution to our constant coefficient partial differential equation. Now boundary conditions are given to us. So we substitute to get a particular solution. So we say our u of 0y is equal to y queen. So any place we see 0 in this, uh, any place we see x in this, we substitute 0. And the result, we equate it to y queen. So we substitute our boundary condition. So our f of u, uh, f, f of, so any place we see x, we put 0. So we have f of negative 3 bracket 0 uh, 3 times 0 that means x will put 0 minus 4y and we equate it to our y cube so this will be 0 so we have f of negative 4y equal to y cube now this is not a single variable being equated so we let another variable to be equal to y. that so we said let a to be equal to negative 4y now we make y the subject so our a over negative 4 will be equal to y so y is actually equal to negative a over 4 so in place of negative 4y we will substitute a and in place of y we substitute negative a over 4 so we go so f of plus uh, minus uh, 4a, that's minus 4y is a, okay? And to be equal to y is this. So that will be negative a over 4, okay? So f of a is equal to negative a cube over 64. 4 cube is actually 64. So our f of a is this. Now we can find... Remember, the general solution was f of uh, f of negative 3x minus 4y. So we substitute that. So our f of negative 3x minus 4y will be up. Any place you see a, we put the whole of that. So get negative. So negative uh, 
bracket negative 3x minus 4y keep all over 64. I hope you get that. There is negative here already. So the negative then I put that keep. Now how do we solve this? Look at this. I'll pull the negative out. This negative out. So I'll get negative out. This negative. Then I'll pull negative 1 out and keep it. So that this will become positive 3x minus uh, plus 3x plus 4y creep all over 64. Negative 1 creep is 1. It's negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 1 will be positive. So our f of negative 3x minus 4y will be equal to 3x will be equal to 3x plus 4y all creep all over 64. Then this becomes a particular solution to this uh, first order constant coefficient partial differential equations. Now let me rewrite this very well so that you, you get what I've written. It's 3x plus 4y cube all over 64. So we find f of negative 3x minus 4y to be this. So we can say that the general solution to the partial differential equation f of a, a, u of x, y will be equal to 3x plus 4y all creep over 64. Now if you want to be sure if this is actually a particular solution, you, you actually uh, verify that. You verify that by finding the partial differentiation of u with respect to s, the partial differentiation of u with respect to y, you substitute into this equation. If the left hand side is equal to the right hand side, then it is a solution. If not, then it is not. Then you know that you are not correct. Then you try to see if you can correct your mistakes. So now let's verify that and see our mistakes and see if it is actually a particular solution to it. So we want to verify if this is actually a solution. This is a particular solution to this uh, partial differential equation. So we can rewrite this as 1 over 64. 3x plus 4y. Okay. Now I'll find partial differentiation of u with respect to x. So remember how to differentiate this. So this is uh, chain rule. So we differentiate what is we drop the power differentiate, find partial differentiation here, repeat it and subtract one from the exponent. So we drop that, that will be 3 over 64. Now I'll find partial differentiation of uh, this. So that will be, when we differentiate this, we we'll get 3, that's with respect to x. Then we repeat the bracket and subtract 1 from this. Please check out my videos on how to uh, do different chain differentiation using chain rule. So now this will be equal to 9 over 64, 3x plus 4y all squared. Now find the partial differentiation of u with respect to y. So with that, the same function. So we we'll differentiate, we'll differentiate this, that will be, we'll drop the power first. Remember that. So 3 over 64. Then we we'll differentiate this, we'll get 4. We we'll repeat the bracket, 3x plus 4y, and subtract 1. So what are we getting? We we'll call this, we'll get 12 over 64. 3s plus 4y all squared. Now we know the partial differentiation of u with respect to y. And we know the partial differentiation of u with respect to x is this. We substitute this and this into our differential equation. If this side, the left hand side is equal to the right hand side, then it is actually a solution. So since we know our partial differentiations, we substitute. So for the partial differentiation of u with respect to s is this. So 9 over 64, 3s plus 4y squared. Okay? Then minus 3. The partial differentiation of u with respect to y is this. So we have 12 over 64, 3s plus 4y squared. Now let's polish this. So 4 times 9 with 36 over 64, 3s plus 4y squared, 
3 times 12 is also 36 over 64. Then 3s plus 4y squared. Please remember this must be equal to 0. So now let's check this. See, they are the same. So once I track 0, the whole of this will be 0 and to be equal to 0. So you can see that our left hand side is equal to the right hand side. So this this uh, function, this function, check it out, this function is actually a particular solution to our uh, partial differential equation. So we know that we are correct. We'll end it here today. Please remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel and play over the video and I know that you will get the concept. Until we meet again on partial differential equation, bye-bye.